Everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to take a look at the newest collab in the world of Monster Strike. It is Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Stone Ocean. This is something I know a lot of people have put in like their top uh, lists of you know animes that they would love to see have a collab with Monster Strike. I think a lot of people have gotten their dreams met here with this collab. So uh, very exciting for a lot of people I'm sure and of course it should be no surprise to you uh, that if you know me I know absolutely nothing about this anime as well so bear with me as I talk about these things. I'm not going to know any nuances about the anime but I'm here to give you the information I can provide at the very least. Uh, first, let's take a look at the gacha monsters. Of course, we have the Kujo Jolin, Kujo Jotaro, and Weather Report as our five six-star monsters. Uh, actually, six-star monsters, sorry, since they are transcendable. Um, we will also get uh, FF and Hermes Costello in the water and fire element, respectively, joining the gacha monsters. Uh, I don't know. We'll have to see it. Now, of course, the character cards, you've already seen them for the six star monsters. We'll go over them, but you know, this video is more about going into the details of the strike shot, getting an idea of the nuances. Um, obviously, I would highly recommend you to watch the official videos from X Flag to see those strike shots in action. Definitely take a look on how they work to get a full idea. You'll get some stats here, which may help you get an idea. Oh, and of course, the values you see on the top right are from Game With, but because this has not even been 24 hours since the collab started, they are very much a temporary rating as you know people start using them, get a feel for how this might synergize with other monsters, or if you can exploit something that does something really intense. Um, you know, so it could go up and down, like we saw with the Conan collab, right? Uh, Akai was. Right? I think Akai right? was the highest at the beginning, but then he dropped down and Conan became the highest one in the end. So that could happen here as well. But anyways, let's start with Kujo Jolin here with a 7.5 rating temporary right now. Um, her strike shot, um, she's going to move around and then of course we'll lock on to the first enemy you hit. And then first it'll do one big attack to start with. Uh, this guarantees weak point damage worth of hits so that's very important to remember here and then there's going to be two sets of attacks counting 44 hits and you can see it's a little bit complicated below so that's why i'm talking about here but um on one set of 44 hits it is a direct damage that's what dd stands for here so you know certain quests will give multipliers to direct damage hits right so this makes sure that you take advantage of that but you also get another set of 44 hits which doesn't count as direct hit damage and so you'll see that there's the 44 times 0 0.05 attack um, that's one set of attacks and at the same time 0 0.01 times attack 44 copies of that not considering direct damage is also fired so that, that's a little confusing, I know. And then there's going to be one final hit, which is a huge final blast here. Um, again, one direct damage, one non-direct damage. And uh, you can see the multipliers there. And after all that happens, uh, Jolene will be invincible for a full turn until she uh, takes her next move. Uh, I think finishes her next move. Yeah, I think so. Um, and typo on the strike shot too, Slef, that should be self, but you can see that the multipliers are just buffed, 1.1 turns into 1.3, the uh, tax, attacks in the middle are essentially doubled, right, 0 0.05 turns into 0 0.1, 0 0.01 to 0 0.02, and then the final hit gets a buff from 5.2 to 6 times attack for the direct hit damage, and the standard uh, damage is a 1.3 turning into a 1.5 and the invincibility lasts for two full turns right so you know she goes she goes again and she goes again you know she will be invincible for that set of turns which could make a huge difference so definitely interesting to see but as of now game with has given her a 7.5 Next up is Kujo Jotaro. He is getting a 8.0 as of this moment. It is a temporary value, remember. But the strike shot is guaranteed to hit the boss after you are done moving, regardless of who you hit first. So that's always a nice thing to see in terms of damage. Um, the strike shot first gear is a 1.3 times buff to himself. And then there's a follow up attack, which does 11 times damage and will delay for two turns. Everybody on the screen. 
everybody on the screen. The second gear uh, ups that buff to uh, 1.8 times normal, and uh, the follow-up attack increased to 18 times, and the delay increases to three turns for him. And yeah, I mean, Brown Spark is always a nice bomb combo for sure. So, um, oops, sorry. Um, with that, uh, definitely see how uh, enjoyable uh, Jotaro will be to play with. Last but not least, we have Weather Report. Um, his Strike Shot is a poison type attack, and that poison does percentage damage. It will take the max HP of that monster and do damage over three turns with a minimum damage threshold. So you can at least guarantee you're going to get that much of damage each turn for three turns. And so you can see that the first, oh, sorry. And also part of his strike shot is that cloud suit, which is essentially giving a barrier. And it doesn't look like there's anything special about it. It functions as a standard barrier works in the game. So how Lucy calculates how strong her barrier is, that carries over to the cloud suit with no real change. At least not that anybody can see uh, or that I found online. Strike Shot first gear is a 10% buff to himself and the poison will do 5% of the enemy's max HP for 3 turns with a guaranteed minimum of 500,000 damage uh, going to that monster. On the second gear of the Strike Shot, it is a 30% buff to himself and the poison will now do 15% of the enemy's max HP for 3 turns which guarantees a minimum of 1 million damage per turn. So definitely interesting. I always enjoy these kind of, you know, poison strike shots. So uh, we'll see if, you know, there's any adjusting to uh, weather report 7.5 rating here uh, for uh, for him. All right, now let's take a look at the four five star monsters. These guys did not have a character card, um, but, you know, I just typed it out today. Uh, we're tar we'll start with uh, Ermes on the left first. He, she is a fire type with an 8.0 rating as of this moment, which is actually nice for a 5-star monster. Super null gravity bear, null damage wall, and regen on the main. Gauge is a null damage. Uh, actually, I already forgot that I was have my game up so I can show that. Uh, that's, that is not you. There you go. There you go. Uh, the gauge is null transport wall. Again, let's make sure we pay attention to that. More and more characters are getting that ability. And Vital Slayer M on the gauge as well. Strike Shot will split uh, Hermes here into two and then they will move around on the stage. And once she's done moving, there will be some healing done. Uh, hmm? Yeah, yeah, there's some healing. And when they, uh, when they combine again, some damage gets... Uh, afflicted uh bump combo we've got the super strike shot turn reducer bullet so it's like a dunk you know style where you'll push that character and that bullet will go and anybody who is in that path of that bullet will have their strike shot turns reduced not bad all right and then let's take a look at ff here she there we go has no gravity bear super no warp uh Actually, that should not have an M. I think the Slayer carried over. Uh, sorry about that. Let's actually change that while we are here because that looks weird. There you go. Super no warp. Uh, and then the Ajin, which is the demi human type Slayer M. That's correct. That's where the M should have gone. Gauge is no block. And we also get recovery, which is nice. Strike shot is uh, she'll basically fire a good amount of bullets. I think it was about like 10 ish. 10, 15 maybe, uh, bullets in the direction you point uh, and will also give uh, defense and attack down to the targets afflicted by that bullet. And I guess my bump combo got pushed out of the screen, but she does have a high cross stinger of the water type there. Now, also don't forget that if you are inclined to spend money in this game, you can purchase um, the Joestar family here, uh, Jolene and Jotaro, together uh, with these abilities. Um, okay, well, that's fine. I'm not going to purchase any, but that's how you can purchase it in the game. Um, just click that banner and hopefully you'll eventually get to it. Uh, sorry, I was on the wrong screen for the slides. 
many items. Again, this is a starter pack, so kind of helping out the char the people who are just joining this game and would like, really like a Jojo character um, and some items to really help you out get started with the game. Uh, now, of course, it costs 980 yen, which is not too bad, but how are the stats here? Uh, oh, of course, for the duration of the collab, uh, Joestar will function as a max luck monster, which gives you two chests at the end of any quest. However, that will go away after the collab is gone. So be careful about that. Now, the, the abilities here, Super Null Warp, Mind Sweeper L, Null Block, Repeat Eat Slayer M. I think that's a solid kit for sure. Uh, definitely something nice. Uh, the Strike Shot, uh, Speed and Power Up. And then after they're done moving, they will move directly under the target that you first hit. Right? And then they'll start punching that monster uh, to do damage. And this is, again, kind of like um, Jolene's Strike Shot where you get one set of direct damage and one set of non-direct damage. Again, if you're just starting, don't worry about that. But first, uh, this character will give a 10% buff to um, themselves. And then they will do the punches, like I was saying. Uh, there's going to be 7% of the attack 24 times. And one set right the person who is on the left i forget which one is which maybe we'll go with jotaro on the left since that's what the picture looks like right that'll be 24 hits of direct damage and then jolene on the right will do 24 damage 24 hits of non-direct damage uh, attack and then they will kick the boss both sides giving seven percent of their attack damage to the boss and finally a static 1.5 million damage that you know will come as a result of the kick motion and them falling down not not too bad to be honest um the gear 2 the buff increases to 30 percent the uh attack bonus jumps up to 24 percent which is actually quite significant i feel like um and then the static damage increases to a cool 2 million all right so those are the gacha monsters that you want to keep your eyes on now of course there's plenty of other monsters that you can collect and that will come from the event screen of the game. You can see that three of them are up right now and these will be always up for you to play. First, the four or five star monsters. Um, you can get them to a maximum of 90 luck, of course. Uh, if you do love the club, you'll want to do that. The two characters that you'll be collecting here will be Thunder McQueen and Gwess in water and wood respectively. You can see that they are at the bottom of the event area and will be available 24-7. Also available 24-7 is the direct drop quest featuring Jongali A. And Jongali A here is a direct drop quest as I said which means you do not need to bring any max luck monsters. You just need to finish the quest successfully to get the drops. Now, there's two things that you have to keep in mind. Anytime you open the stage, it will remind you, have you played this stage yet? And this will say, you have not played today. Because, why is that important? Every day, when you play this quest, you will get seven drops as a reward. And that kind of helps you get along with this, get along, you know, this quest going. Because, like I said, it's a direct drop quest. Chests, luck chests, do not apply for this quest. So, uh, you are limited on how many you can get, but you can help yourself out by that by playing co op. If you play co op, the more people you play with, the higher chance you have of getting three drops for this quest so that you can finish this hopefully as fast as you can. But make sure you don't forget to do it because seven drops each day is invaluable time saved. Now, Let's take a look at the 5-6 uh, scheduled quests. They will have to come um, when you uh, are ready for them. You can check them out in the schedule. We've got Lang Wrangler in the wood type and Mirashon in the dark type. You know, if you want to get a notification for when they come up, make sure you hit the check mark. You can also set up recurring notifications here so that it just does it for all appearances of them in the collab. And of course, as you can see here, we do have an insidious quest that was revealed at the last Monster Strike news, and that is Enrico Pucci here. Um, all monsters, when you take on his stage, will be given plus 99 luck. So you do not need to bring any max luck monsters here. Any monster will be treated as a max luck. So that means take your OP monsters. We'll see if it's going to be uh, Solomon or not. Um, actually, let's see. Do we have... I'm sure we do, right? Okay, 
Uh, magic circles and speed down walls, huh? Well, let's just take a look at what that means. Magic circle is never fun. Uh, let's see. Anchi Mahojin there and no speed down wall. And just for kicks, let's say we can only do light monsters. Oh, interesting. Okay, well, we'll see. I'm actually interested that it's interesting that no collab monsters are showing up there. Very interesting. Okay, well, anyways, uh, look for his quest in the schedule and make sure you take him on if that is to your desire. Um, we also, on top of all that, are getting a new sacred, not sacred, sorry, I keep doing that, guardian beast for the collab here. And you can see it is going to be highlighted in the top area. Uh, you can use Fuero Biscuits and this one uh, also gives double drops because it is a limited time collab quest. Make sure you don't miss it out. And of course, um, always something that people you know may miss when they uh, do these quests is do note that you can only get 400 shards by completing this character's quest. Uh, if you want to max out uh, the Guardian Beast to their max level 10, you need to get 500 pieces, which means you need to borrow from something else on the screen to be able to finish that character off. So do be careful about that. Here is his ability. It will increase the amount of damage to the boss by X percent and has a Y percent chance to paralyze the boss for two turns. That's... Uh, sorry, I am missing all these little things here and there, but... For two turns. Obviously, uh, there you go. There you go, fixed it. And of course the requirement here is you have to pick up two items in the same turn and you have to successfully do that twice in the stage. Once you do that, you have the uh, permission to use this Guardian Beast. And there is a chart of what level you're at and what X and Y refers to. Now obviously if you get to level 10, you get to 99% chance of paralyzing the boss, which is great. And to get 10% extra damage to the boss for two turns, is also really nice as well. But you can see as you uh, fall off the track, um, at least for the uh, amount damage that's increased, that is a completely linear, um, you know, scale. But the Y, you know, the chance to paralyze does increase uh, much faster in the later levels. So do keep that in mind as you uh, level up stone free or not. Now. This is an interesting thing that you can get within the game. Um, basically, when you clear any quest, any quest in the game, you will get dollars. And you can use these dollars for goods and services in the game. Now, there is a difference between the two uh, types of quests you can get money from. If you play a collab quest, which you know we went over earlier, including the Guardian Beast stage, that will earn you $5 per successful clear. Any other quest will just get you one dollar, and that includes temples, you know, other standard events, anything in the library, or any other guardian beasts. Maybe you want to finish off the shards for Stone Cold here. Stone Cold, Stone Free. Sorry, that's uh, what a wrestler, right? Um, yeah. So either way, you can do this, and uh, I do believe this applies if you join as guests too. It didn't say anywhere specifying as host. So as long as you clear a quest, that you'll get some dollars, and depending on what kind of quest, you may get five dollars versus one. Now, what do you do with those dollars? Well, you can go into this mission screen here, and you'll see that there are uh, missions here for you to complete. And you might be asking, well. What am I supposed to use dollars here for? Well, take a look. You can see that there are some closed off areas. If you want to unlock these areas first, you must complete the missions in your current area. Once you do that, then a guard will come up allowing you to unlock the next area, but you have to pay them off first. Uh, the costs for them will increase for each area and the missions are not yet available. Um, you have to just see them on screen. Uh, does look like, you know, areas one, two, and three people have gotten through, but you can't get to get, uh, area four quite yet. Uh, 
or maybe just somebody hasn't updated. But you can see which quest you need to clear here. Um, at least for area one, you need to clear the green uh, collab quest. And then the second one asks you to clear the light uh, collab quest. And then the second one again asks you to clear it, but you have to use a strike shot during that quest. And uh, so that might just be a, hey, don't go too fast or make sure you find somebody with a low strike shot count to be able to fire it off. But it'll be that kind of theme for the rest of the areas. Make sure you don't forget to do that so that you can unlock them efficiently. Now, you can also spend your dollars and you can get there by the monster uh, tab and then go to the GD store, which is conveniently at the very top of your screen. Now, you will see that you cannot purchase anything quite yet because the store is also partitioned off by the jail missions. You need to unlock those new areas before you can purchase items from the store here. Um, I don't know why there's not even anything for, you know, one, uh, you know, area one, but there you go. But anyways, you can see that each area will be partitioned off, right? Area two, area three, area four, and there is a cost associated in dollars on the left and the total inventory limit on the right. So you can pick up, you know, three stamina mins here um, and, you know, one miracle min here and even a biscuit here. You know, people are saying they're sad they don't see a super scroll. Oh well, such is life. And that is it for the JoJo collab rundown. And um, one thing that I do know that people are struggling with is that you may, if you're a Google Play user, you may have noticed that you are unable to purchase orbs for this game. And uh, that seems to be a new policy from the Google Play Store. Well, you need a Japanese account to be able to uh, purchase, you know, currency for that game. And so I don't know that about Monster Strike, but that did happen to me to the other game I upload on this channel, Unizon Air. And if you watch that, you may know that I spend a boatload of money on that game. Um, so I basically encountered the same thing. Now, if you want help, I highly recommend you join to the Discord channel to get, you know, you know, I'm pretty much up for, you know, most of the, you know, day evening in, uh, you know, US Pacific hours, even late at night, I'm up. So if you need help there, I'll try my best to help you out. I will, I'm trying to think if I want to make a video for this or not. Uh, I said I would do it yesterday and then I got busy and, you know, today also came and gone and, you know, I'm just seeing people, you know, uh, run into that issue and I think it's just gonna be better if I interact with them directly rather than do a video but if you think it's worth it I'm gonna probably sleep over it a little bit and decide if I actually want to do a video I'll try to do it sooner than later because I think people will be immediately impacted by it but um, if you think it'll be useful uh, I'll try to do that and gather as much information experiences from other people to see if it actually does line up um, with my memory because I, I don't have the best. Anyways, uh, coming up next at the very least will be my gacha video for the Jojo collab. It is going to come. I'm going to take that video right after I finish this one and uh, we'll see how that uh, goes. Um, obviously, I know people might be a little disappointed that they're not getting super high ratings, uh, but you know, it's still early. We can see somebody shine later and um, hopefully those of you who are super excited about Jojo get what you want. Anyways, let me know in the comments if there's anything you want to talk about, especially I got a new light here. I don't know if the lighting is better than before or not, but I uh, thought I would try that. Let me know if you have any uh, comments that way about how it looks or how bad it looks. Uh, if you like what you saw, hit the like, subscribe, comment, ENG Bonds for Twitter, and like I said, Discord for other folk, talking to other folks who speak English and love the game. That's it for me today. Thank you for watching, and until next time, bye-bye.